I think about Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock. Jackson Pollock, Jack Pollock, son, Jack Lock Polson, Jack Pol, Lockson, son Pol Lock Jack. Jackson Pollock. I used to have a knife, picked my nerve to paint with But then it fell down, I haven't put it back up because I'm not into knives anymore Across the street the other day, but I decided to wait a few seconds just in case some car hit another one and knocked it out into the road and I'd be standing right there and get hit by a car and sure enough, that's exactly what happened This van came and whacked right into the back of an MG and the guy, like, he couldn't stop the car, but he just kept on rolling right out into the street. It was so stupid. I don't know what he was doing. It looked like he was in shock or something. Because he got rear-ended. Jackson Pollock. I think about your locusts because I bought a pair of locusts, except mine had high heels on them, not like yours. And I think about the jeans you wore to paint in. Because everyone in California has jeans on. I'm not into jeans, but I guess I'm going to have to get into jeans now that I'm here. Jackson Pollock. After I get on the bus, after I see the courier flips over. Christmas. Christmas, she goes... Christmas has always been an abomination for me. I watched my father get drunk. Everything, oh God, so shitty. Even Granny backs into the car at Easter time and since October. But like he could show up any time. And he lets the woman drive his pickup truck down. And he was worried how she'd blow a head gasket or something. And you could tell, like, his pickup truck once had a camper on, and he figured another camper only cost 150 bucks. What was he joking? Because, like, they're, like, someone had taken it off and plugged all the holes up. I mean, like, he was driving around all his canvases, and they're all getting wet. And, like, he really didn't care because, like, he was hardly selling any of them anyway. Because, like, he sold a couple to my dad, and he gave one away to my grandmother. And I bought a pair of sneakers, and I figured should she wear. So I figured, what the hell for a joke? I'll wear her sneakers. Jackson Pollock. And I think about the way your car turned over. It was Beal. My grandparents had Ozabeel. It was green. It was a 68, so it was loaded by all the doors. Obviously. She was making the click click sound that her granny make <coughs> their mouth and moving back and forth and everything. and like when she used to work she typed that report she's really a very fast typist she typed those reports to this hospital and every report she typed up she thought she had disease that she was typing about and then around 1980 i believe 1980 or 81 they had it repainted white and then the timing chain broke on it and the transmission went out on it and the brakes went out on it, everything just went out on it, so they kitted in for a brand new Mustang! When the car she became like a bag lady, had bags and stuff everywhere, she used to hang out with the bums on Upper King Street, down by the ABC liquor store, and by movie theater, or it used to be movie theater now, before it got leveled, and became a parking lot next to the Volvo dealership. When my dad told me to get a Japanese car because they had a better rate of repairing everything else, but they wouldn't do it, my grandmother would not do it because she said the Jap had allowed Kadhafi into the country, and she just didn't like that. Jackson Park.
alcoholic. Your car turned over and you had two women in it. One of them was your girlfriend. There were bottles, there were cans of beer all around. The couple was sitting up like a desperate job sculpture. Woman on the bus says, I can't take this interview shit. I've humiliated myself enough. I go around these places all of them day after day and that's never happened. I can't take more shit. I'm just gonna be cool. It's, 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 it's not worth it, all this shit. The thing that I think about Vietnam War is how his family, I used to know he's living on a block down the street, he used to sit on their swing on the porch, had two kids. Anyway, he was in like, well, the kids said he was working for the Secret Service. I think he was working for the CIA. Well, he was over in Laos. So when the North Vietnamese finally went to South Vietnam, finally took it over, which was finally the end of the Vietnam War. All the Americans are still in South Vietnam were getting out of there. She, the wife said how they were getting all out. And meanwhile, while the Vietnamese were going around people's houses taking their air conditioners. They weren't worried about North Vietnamese. They were more concerned getting air conditioners. Jackson Pollock. Anyway, they bought the Mustang, and then my grandmother got cancer, and it was wrapped all around her heart, and I bet she smoked a lot of cigarettes, didn't you, Jackson Pollock? Well, at least you have to live by dying love cancer. I called up the office that's in the finance district that cost $16,000 a month in rent, and asked if this is, was some, asked us if we were a hotel on 6th Street. Well, at least you have to live by dying love cancer. Jackson Pollock. Jackson. Lock Paul. Lock Jack. Some Paul. Paul Lock. Paul Jack. Sun Lock in the room because JC had decorated all that with death all over the walls. Buddhist monks who set themselves on fire, the protests of the Vietnam War, and my music teacher, Mrs. Summers, who went to Thailand. She shows me some room that some monk had, and it had like a TV set and all this stuff in it, like all these little knickknacks and stuff. And and the kids go, oh, he's going to burn up his TV because he just died. And when you died, you burn everything. And the black kids go, oh, he's going to burn that TV up. Look at that. Pull Jack. Lock son. Jackson Pollock. They said you were assholes when you were drunk. But I just like know who is it when they're drunk. Act like an asshole. Jackson Pollock. You danced around, threw around paint. Splattered. Like my wife. Summer said how she and her girlfriend they dragged all this wine around. Taiwanese wine they tried, finally had and they didn't like the taste of it. Meanwhile they dragged it around everywhere. And Chiquita is sitting on that couch because she's getting a ride with me to the t-shirt factory because her family never takes her anywhere. She's so full of stories. She says how her family used to forget to pick her up and stuff. How her family said they were going to fix this car and they didn't. How her family drove a taxi cab. I saw her father one time. He was feeling air in his tires. We barely got by him. The walls, like, so they come out walls, they didn't mean to. They just did a lousy job. They did a lousy job passing the walls of her. And the lady, Mrs. Brooker, who insisted on painting the bathroom pink. So the guy who flashed them must have been drunk, like Steve Jackson, Pellet, but later a flash and said, no, even drunk, there was no excuse. And he was the one who passed the big hole in the wall. And I'm gonna give him more money than you should have because he's crazy. Jackson Pollock. Working at the gas station, he tells my mother, 
Oh, Mrs. Stinger, you look as useful as ever. My oh, mother goes, what do you mean by me, Ronnie? I said, he said how you're just so full of energy and everything. Uh, I'm like, that's me, just full of energy. Yeah, real full of energy. Woo, man. Five years in a row now. She is just laid up in that bed for eight months, depressed. I just want to die. I wish I was dead. And it says her eating, that's the way she justifies her existence. Back when she was working at her job, she would eat like a whole bag of cookies a day. And your car flipped over, unsafe at any speed. Only Ralph Nader had been there, but you had been drinking. You know you should not have been drinking and driving, even though your therapist said that was okay, because you so lucky and you weren't caught by the Virginia cops. I was a little sent to your ASAP. And then you had to pay five hundred dollars at least to you an artist, and you had no fucking money at all. And then you had to pay additional fines, but you had no fucking money at all. And and had your license revoked, but you had no fucking money at all. So you couldn't afford a taxi cab, so you couldn't go anywhere, so you couldn't buy any booze, so you couldn't do anything, and you just go crazy. Judy calls me up and she oh, got yeah. this black cat back with this guy. And she's wearing this safari hat. And she's wearing these plastic flip-flops because she had worn off because of poison ivy and she was down in Old Town. And people, they said, oh, you should be taken to the hospital. And my dad wouldn't do it because he wanted to run after her. And she had all the poison ivy all over place because she'd been out. <laughs> Me, my mother was over 21, was driving all booklets and stuff in the Alpha. That's back when she could start up. Then my dad, something happened to him, then he had to hot wire it up with some kind of button you press. And then my mother had this bald headed guy, and she was going to take him with her to the zoo. Skinhead, and he said he chopped, shaved all his hair because he was going bald anywhere. But she couldn't get the car started, so they couldn't go. Four different drugs now. Now she goes, now nah, they're going to put me on lithium. Makes your kidneys stop up. I don't want to do it that night. It just sits on my bureau. And I don't use knives anymore. And I don't use the gun anymore. It just my closet with my records and I don't see my records anymore. They just sit. It's my... Oh, she goes, my new art concept is to get married. That's a woo barber. That's a real far out art concept, man. And you know, she goes, oh, yeah, yeah. I was kind of making fun of her for that, you know. And she's getting married to this guy named Bill. I didn't tell her the time. Oh, wow, I had an uncle, aunt and uncle named Barbara and Bill. They got divorced because that seemed kind of like a bad thing to tell somebody it was just when they're getting married that they're going to get divorced. My new artistic concept. Not to listen to... Tell them they get divorced. Some German tonight. So she said, I'm going to just go, to go out. Because I was leaving. Get in the truck. And she goes, I'm going to go out and get some German stuff. Because I feel like eating German tonight. I'll get some sauerkraut and sausage and stuff. Her mother was good in the engine of the green Audi, and there was like all the smoke everywhere. And another time she said to my dad and my grandmother, known as Granny, it's funny how, how your grandparents on one side of the family like to be called by a different name than your other grandparents. Like on my mother's side, her mother is known as Granny, and her father is known as Peppa. That's apparently what they call grandfathers down in Texas. While my father's side is grand, grandpa and grandma. Records in my closet. Lucy has this neat way now of saying, "Oh, I think I'm pregnant." And then she goes, "Oh, I think I was raped." She thinks she was raped. <laughs> She's not sure. <laughs>
<laughs> that is Lucy Jack, I ain't working in a corporation or anything, no guy like that. Roger just got out of jail. Now he's back at the drug house. Jackson Pollock. Granny and my dad are sitting there in the house. My mother comes up, she's in her hellion stage. She's probably came out of her depression, now she's on the high. She says to my mother, my grandmother, and my dad, to the two people I love the most, go fuck yourselves. Then she proceeds to get into my grandmother's car. It's probably a Buick. My grandmother always gives Buicks. They stole the Fitzgerald's pub. Two of the ladies came back from Nicaragua. She said how people got all shot up in their cars and they get rid of the bodies. They just dump gasoline and on the cars and they set them on fire. She was rationed to one cup of milk or one cup of rice a week. She left Nicaragua. Mr. Fitzgerald was working for the CIA. And then he went down in Nicaragua. I mean, I didn't exactly feel sorry for him at all. They come back up, and she had some bullet holes in their car, and she kept the car because it had the bullet holes in it. Anyway, they had this little poodle, and he was walking down the street with it, and these four black guys could only mug him. So since he didn't have a wallet on him, they took the dog. Then they put a reward in the paper and they got the dog back. My mother goes, oh, that's terrible. They just love that little dog. clothes and dry them and sometimes you have to dry them twice if you've got lots of socks because they need to be dry the first time and so you go in and I just love this little box of detergent we went to it, Arizona and when you first get to the line there they say hi good morning welcome to Arizona are you carrying any plants or fruit and of course you say no because if you are you're going to dump them right out they don't have a map or anything before you look at Arizona and you go on to the petrified forest and the painted desert, and there's like a little rattlesnake, and you almost fall off the mace as soon as you get up in the air. And a little box of turkey you can buy for 35 cents, and you see a tooth crawling, and you got ripped off right before they move to go, I'm gonna kill him in a fucker! It's a little box of cheer and tie and some kind of bargain brand or something that's supposed to include fabric softener or something that you have to only use a quarter in a dime. That's kind of what gets me at the launch, right? You can only use certain coins. You can only use certain coins in the machines. You can only use quarters for most of them. Another one of these takes dimes. Like, you can't use any nickels. You can't use any 50 cent pieces. You can't use any dollar pieces. You can't use any of those suits of B. Anthony doll pieces. They bombed out. You don't see many of them anymore. I guess they had their time and you put in three quarters for now it's 85 cents. And you first dump the detergent in because you gotta make sure it's properly soaked because if it doesn't, it's gonna leave bluing streaks on your clothes. And you put it on your clothes and they can't go above a certain line. There's a line that says no dry loads above this line. And then you close the lid and then you put in the money in the slot and you push it in. And then you sit down and you wait in the laundromat while the clothes wash. And there's your detergent box. You got a big one, giant size, sitting on top of the washer. And then when the thing is done, you gotta carry the wet clothes to the dryer. And all the way, you always drop something. 
Oh, he is all the time right outside my window, constantly, all day long. Cause I'm home on the blue oil right now. I'm working for the time being at the FCA Asset Management of Subsidiary of State Savings and Loan. And the letters FCA stand for the Financial Corporation of America. And their business is money. That's what they want to make, and that's what they think about, and that's what they do with money, money, money. That's all there is. And even though I'm not in my apartment, I'm still getting to hear the car crash because I work on Broadway, right on the outskirts of the financial district, which is growing bigger and bigger every day. There's a big office. Like upstairs, they have them selling the jumbo certificates, and downstairs, they're going to have them trying to give loans out to people at 18% interest or whatever. Meanwhile, they're giving people 8.5%, depending on your terms, that is, on $100,000. And anyway, there's you know, cars screeching and honking, honk, on Broadway. Anyway, one day I was in my boss's office. And she's from the suburbs and really freaks around how all of us live in the city. And she's hearing this car honking because, God, that is so raunchy. And sitting in my apartment and there's nothing to do because I'm full of typing out resumes and no one cares about anyway. Because there's so much high high unemployment and all there is to listen to is... <laughs> when there's a car crash on the record, you can tell they always get that same piece, that same recording of a car crash, like they only had one recording of a car crash, that's it, and everyone uses it, everyone from the residents, right on down the couple uses that same car crash, you know, there's this car, and then, <laughs> that same one, every time. It's slightly different though in the city when cars work. It's like, you know, it's really quick. And it's like, the second day I came to San Francisco, I saw a car crash. There was this silver Pinto station wagon in left hand turn only lane. It went straight. And then there was this Muni bus with this electric con. And it went a left hand turn and hit the silver Pinto and knocked it right up on the curb. And there was this person standing on the curb and boy did he jump out of the way when he saw that silver print the whack up on the curb. You know, and, you know, the sound just didn't keep on going. It just kind of crunched, you know. Crunch. That was it. And the car crashed all the time. It's so dangerous to drive. It's so dangerous to walk. Which makes me think about the people in New York and how they don't sing about car crashes. They sing about fire, being on fire, seeing people on fire, buildings on fire, being like fire. I guess people don't drive cars and buildings are always on fire all the time in New York. But it's different in California. And if you live in a city, you own a car, baby. You better believe it, honey. And these people, they think they're on the freeway or something when they're not. They're not on the freeway on their way to Oakland. They're in the city in the giant fast. It's not midtown Manhattan. The lights are not set up so you go 60 miles an hour. Not in San Francisco. So it's constant. <laughs> That's the sound of car crashes outside my window. I hear it all day long. Cause I'm home unemployed in my apartment.
outing. She sold it for $300. This black guy named Anthony. She says to him, Do you really know what you're doing? And my dad was a guy, drunk driver, and it messed his hand all up. Stop here. 
camp right by you. so fast Saturdays, my apartment is real quiet. Everyone goes out. I don't know where. They just go out. They're not here during the day. It's real funny because otherwise, it can be real noisy here. Like the neighbors next door, they're always fighting. Like it's 3 o'clock in the morning, they wake me up fighting like just like at home. Like beating her and my mother with her affair with the French hair that she did 20 years ago who's also in the group of sex. Just think when, just when you think you've heard it all. No matter what you've been through, it always gets you. I don't know why I just get to you anyway. Sabrina, she's cheating on him, he's beating on her, or well, she used to, but then she got bad, boy. She got bad. She got her hammer. She's gonna start hitting him with her hammer, boy. And meanwhile, her boyfriend comes and he's missing. He's in jail. I can believe that. I've been over that hall of justice. You give your purse that guy there for a gun detector, he fuse it all up like some kind of pervert or something. I went there twice and tried to get fingerprints on my job so they could do some security check on me to see about my past, previous activities. And they quit twice, they couldn't do it because they had the cash register locked because either they're afraid the cops are going to steal money from the cash register or they're afraid someone's going to break into the hall of justice and rip all their money off. Either one is pretty, is bad, you know, stupid. And they kicked the door down, they tried to kick the door down because they thought that one of us had stolen the radio. Of course, Thomas wasn't in jail yet, he just got out of prison for robbery. Because you see, I live downtown. And my apartment was at one time a three-bedroom apartment, and they converted each bedroom to a separate apartment with everyone sharing this crummy kitchen and bathroom with a rat run back across me. Because I live downtown, and people say, God, I never live downtown. How do you ever do it? And I said, well, it is very simple. You just go to the building manager's office, and say, yeah, 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 y
blown at her. I don't want to get out of here. I want to go. And the sink's all stuck. I probably use a whole cane of Drano to get that damn thing open. And she, so she gets locked in the bathroom, right? So what does she do? She screams, her baby's crying, the phone is ringing. Poor oh, damn, that's what she does all day. She's on welfare. She's 15. She's got so much. She shouldn't know what to do, so what she does. Hiding in the act on the phone with her unhired boyfriend, she had Thomas being in jail. Boyfriend, the cab driver. Anyway, the other she came at 2.30 in the morning. I'm getting mad. What if it's disgusting? Either you or me. Charity goes, oh, motherfucker, you're going to die. You're going to die. You're gonna die! And when she calls the police, I'm gonna come here. He's gonna try to put on hold and he's gonna. I'm gonna spin the blade. I'm gonna hold him. I'm gonna hold him. I can't take him on hold. And he's banging with the weapon. He's out. He's with the pistol. Down there trying to stop him. Get him! 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 And when I was trying to can, all people always say, ooh, I can't tie my can. So it was funny, Gordon, they always jump over me trying to say, but I can't stand that hard stuff. So. She reminded me of the girl, you know, it's not in the class, whose name, I, I can't remember, I, I can't remember her name. <laughs> anyway, this person comes in for a pair of $15, she's not spending an hour trying to sell them $15 shoes, and they don't take it, she's so pissed, because that's how she gets paid off the commission, and then the person only buys $15 pair of shoes. They can't find that Italian monography teacher, she looked like that lady out of trash. The jerks off the bottle are looking for some great trash. He says, I didn't have to be on welfare. I was born on welfare. I'm going to die on welfare. And it makes me think of all these welfare mothers like Sabrina. How does she do on welfare? I mean, I thought Reagan was cutting down on people like that. I mean, he's getting on them. Good job. When she's 17, she's not working. She's not in school. All she's doing is knocking. Oh, she's pretty bad. Before she went and kicked it down, she knocked it all apart anyway. With broken off the end of the plunger. Because they got this big fight and he threw it into the bathroom. I thought he threw it out into the hall. And everything. And, and. Remember Mrs. Kitchen, that was her name. She used to take aspirin every day. I bet she's going to have ulcers off the sides of a car tire. And she used to wear all these weird looking ladies. Wait, she belonged to me. She, she, she should have been trying to move it. And Beverly moved in with the cute young screaming and stuff. And, you gonna give me a baby. You're going to go up to the foster home. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. Which makes you think, if you can't change the problem, don't expect the problem to change. Then I guess you're going to have to move out of the house. Well, I can't have any of this shit, so I stuck it in the freezer. 
but unfortunately it picked up the smell of the creepers going too good. And you find out some blueberry waffle. God, is that terrible. So, and then he had the felt. And there was some other stuff in the freezer too. Like the green giant peas and cheese shit. I ate that. I don't know. I don't think that exactly agrees with me. I need the odd hog and dog ice cream, but I just don't know what he's talking about that. And it's only stuck some pork stuff in there. And there's ice all over so you couldn't close the door. And it constantly defrost the freezer. Water dripping down to the floor. Joseph Boys also had his chocolate bunnies. My cousins, they had a bunny. Then it died. They think someone poisoned it. They also had a couple Doberman pinchers, which always flunk out in these dog shows. One of the time I saw them on the subway with this Doberman pincher. And someone said, Every dyke I know has a dog. And the fag says, Oh, I thought it was cats. I went down to sit the telephone, the phone sound. Just try to get a phone. And this Asian woman, she's trying to push all this stuff on me. Wants me to get, tells me to get unlimited because she says to me, if you plan on living here in San Francisco for more than a year, you want to get the unlimited. So what do I do? I go get the unlimited. Then she wants me to give me call waiting, call forwarding, and answering machine, all this bullshit. Well, you know, I can't afford that shit. So I just get a wire phone, I get a touch tone, and there are some drag queens there trying to get a phone. I went in line, so I have to pay my $70 deposit. And the fag goes to me, so so many faggy people work in there, just get the telephone. Fags and punks. Like the fact there was this punk looking woman. Get a load of that dress over there! Isn't that a riot? And I go to me, he's trying to be a little funny, you know. And I pay my money. And there I am, bag full of phone books and phone and cords and a receiver. And I get on the bus, the 45 of one. And these two old farts come up there sitting next to me. Saying, Ooh, I got up to Washington, ain't even in that club no more. It was no good. So I try to get by and I get off the bus and my bag rips and all the stuff falls out on Sutter. Uh, and then JC ends up using the phone most of the time because his 55 year old account boyfriend calling up 3,000 miles away three times a day. Trying to get him to come back home and I had to go outside when they were talking on the phone. It's really weird. Now here JC would have sex in front of me but he wouldn't talk on the phone in front of me. Like talking on the phone is more private thing to him than having sex. And Aunt Lizzie get on the phone, she talk for hours away. She goes, you know, I, knew, I met this guy over on Key Bridge, and he had, like he used to be in this gang, but he quit it because someone had a tattoo on their arm, but one of the guys didn't like it, so he took a knife and cut it right out. And I, and I met this black guy named Jeff. It just makes me feel so cotton picking good things. She tells Anthea, Turn off that damn record. I can hate that fucking song. Turn it all damn time. Soul Train was Lizzie's favorite show, and she used to work for a hospital. She's been in that hospital. She doesn't know which drug she's on now. Now she's got leukemia. And my uncle thinks that Thorazine has ruined his liver. He was in West Point. They're gonna, they're gonna mess with it, they they're gonna, they're gonna have gangrene in so they have to cut it off. I asked my sister, how much drugs is my on that? She goes, oh, she's on about three drugs. And Jay 
days because he was hit by a cat. Because, well, I let my cat out three days ago and he's still missing now. I don't know how to call it the FPCA. There's some air people in there, so you gotta watch out because you know how over in Chinatown there are no cats and no rats because you're eating them. And I think about Robert Rochberg, the chicken on his pins, you could eat that, and then had the goat and Brett, the one on the farm, and he could even tell the ghost of the Guamanese who would cuddle up and laugh about it. And my favorite food is. <laughs> Finger. Let's see. If I slide the fourth finger in place of my fifth, then I can play A with my fifth finger. <laughs>